Jim, what are we seeing as, as, as the dynamics here and whether we can see uh, some calm being restored? Good morning, Heidi. Yeah, from, from all accounts, um, it's relatively quiet on the streets of Conakry, the capital right now. Um, as you say, um, the, the new leadership, the, the military leadership there is saying that it will allow mining operations to continue as normal. And certainly what we're hearing from uh, foreign operators in the country is that uh, operations are uh, proceeding um, fairly normal at the moment. Of course, it's difficult to get good information um, from these sites which are outside of the capital. Um, but so far, it sounds like uh, things are running, still running relatively smoothly. What I would say is that it's a fast-moving situation. Uh, the former president, Alpha Conde, he's not uh, conceded power um, to this um, to this new uh, leadership as yet. So there's still a way to run in this story. So uh, I think there will be some uncertainty and therefore volatility in, in the aluminium price, um, you know, certainly for the time being. Uh, I want to bring in uh, the, the sort of China uh, part of the equation here. Uh, you know, what does it mean for the Simandu project, iron ore project, uh, which is obviously China's and them backing that initiative there as their way to diversify uh, you know, their, their ore sources? Well, David, that's really the several billion dollar question that a lot of people in the iron ore industry are asking right now. What does this mean for Simandu? Um, obviously, the, the, the great hope of China for this huge um, iron ore project to, to take some of the, uh, to dilute some of its reliance on Australian iron ore. And, and as, you're, as you're well aware, um, China has been looking to diversify its sources of raw materials from Australia amid a yeah, uh, a diplomatic spat between those two countries that has sort of evolved over the past year. Uh, Simandu has been long in the, you know, long in the development. Um, and one of the interesting parts of this project is that the government, the, the government that's just been ousted, one of the one of the main um, drivers of them awarding the contract to China and, and the other various groups involved was that they build a very long rail line, 400 miles long, to a port in Guinea rather than maybe some cheaper and, and more, more efficient alternatives. So it does beg the question of, you know, if, if we do get a new government in power that's perhaps more flexible, maybe they will be open to different ways of arranging that. Um, but in the meantime, a lot of uncertainty over whether the project will continue and whether there will be delays to it.